Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, expert witnesses, uh, for being here. Uh, Dr. Persons, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions, if you don't mind. I, I want to thank you uh, very much for your service, and thank you for GAO's uh, excellent service. Do a, do a fantastic job. We, we really appreciate that. Uh, as, you've, as we've heard today, the National Academy of Public Administration report recommends that Congress should not stand up an OTA like uh, entity within the legislative branch, but instead should provide the Government Accountability Office and the Congressional Research Service with the authority and resources to build their, their science and technology capacity. Do you agree that this would be a better use of taxpayer uh, money uh, in our country? And uh, are there any authorities that GAO is currently lacking that is impeding it from building up its science and technology capacity? So thank you. Uh, first of all, let me return the thank. Thanks, Mr. Babin, for the question, for You're the welcome. compliment as well. Uh, we have an extraordinary staff that we've built and doing uh, very important work. So appreciate that. Uh, in terms of our, um, our our view on on the capabilities of the capacity, uh, we don't um, have an official position on whether or not we can do everything that's that's at. But we we do believe we can do a, a good deal of the oversight, insight, foresight umbrella of work that we believe Congress has. We believe we're uniquely positioned to be able to just. Uh, the burden for Congress is but to ask the questions that may pertain to science to technology, and then we can work inversely to solve that and provide that in that case. Absolutely. I, I think it's significant, sir, that uh, you have both Belfer and Napa independently came from this from an absorptive uh, conclusion as well. I thought that was a very important uh, I was impressed with the studies in terms of the quality and what they were doing, and I think when you look at uh, where they came out, that, that particular piece is important because as one, uh, in addition to Dr. Blair, I have other senior former OTA officials, some of which said, you know, U.S. Congress is the most advised body in the world. So uh, having more input is not necessarily, I think, uh, the key challenge, although we always want quality of input and filtering and selecting. So I think okay. that's, that's, um, that's where we are on that. Great. And, and then what I most appreciate about GAO is the trusted, nonpartisan information that it provides on the performance of federal programs. And so I, I would ask you this, how does GAO ensure that it produces fact-based information that meets those rigorous standards? Yes, sir. So we, you can't get a report out of GAO if it's not all about the facts and what's provable, what's documented, and so on. Uh, we have the government uh, auditing standards that have been around uh, for, de we, for decades. We literally wrote the book. We're nearly a century old as an institution having done that. Uh, a lot of that, the, what we call the yellow book, is essentially uh, the scientific method in accountancy language. Uh, did you get the right data? Is it fact-based? Uh, are you getting balance in your inputs? Do you have an independent quality check? Are you communicating the results properly? And, and so on. And so uh, in that case, it's ideal. It really is uh, a lot of it in the scientific method. Then we're also doing the, uh, as we mentioned already, the National Academies uh, partnership, particularly when it's technical work, to help expand and reach out to. And then, as I mentioned in my opening remarks, we're building those networks into universities and scientific organizations uh, to be able to get the best uh, and brightest. On tech assessment, we just yesterday issued a design handbook to go out for a year uh, review and comment to help us with large public input to, to be accountable to what is good TA, what are the outcomes of TA which I think is what the conversation needs to be about in terms of fitting in the absorptive side of things, and how do we vouch for uh, quality TA, okay. which this is an augmentation of or an apparatus to help work under our quality assurance framework to guarantee, sir, what, yes, what the sir. Congress needs. Thank you. Uh, just uh, curiously, uh, how, how, just how many member of Congress requests for information uh, does GAO get? Well, we report, we issue hundreds of reports a year, and then so I would uh, say we at least get as as many of those, whether it's phone calls, uh, table side briefings. Uh, I recently did a roundtable with uh, a different House committee just on electronic health records and what blockchain or digital ledger technology may mean for that, uh, in addition to hearings and so on. So uh, extensive. I, I, it's extensive. extensive. Okay. And I do want to just, I, Dr. Blair is a friend of mine. He's been keeping us accountable ourselves. It is our middle name on this. But I, we do disagree with the idea that we are not relevant to committees. Uh, on page 13 of my testimony statement, we have nearly a dozen different 
uh, committees, including House Science, in this case, that request our work and that are absorbing and, and things like that. So we are tied in intimately through our congressional protocols to a broad array uh, of, of members and committees and staff and so on. So we are uh, in the position to be in an on-demand, on-call, if you just need to ask a question, even if it's a quick, can you tell me what 5G is all about, for example, then we're happy to come and do that. Uh, that, that, that is very good, uh, good information, and I really uh, appreciate that. I just think we need to make sure that, uh, that, that Congress is always getting trusted, nonpartisan information that is being requested. So I yield back, Madam Chair.